To start a game of Seven Wonders, each player chooses one of the Seven Wonders to build. Next, you're going to take the three decks of cards. You've got deck one, deck two, and deck three. For each of these decks, you want to remove all of the cards that have a number in the lower right corner that is higher than the number of players. In this game, we'll have three players, so anything that has a number of four plus and up, we'll be removing those from each deck. All the cards that have a number that's equal to the number of players and below, we'll be keeping. In this game, that only means the three plus cards. The cards that you've pulled out of the deck can go right back in the box. You won't need them for the rest of the game. Repeat this process with all three decks, and then we're gonna move on to the purple cards. Now, purple cards, what you wanna do is you wanna have as many purple cards as there are players plus two. So we have three players in this game, so that means we'll be putting five in the third deck. Once you randomly select the purple cards, shuffle them into the third deck. Put the rest of the cards back in the box. To finish setup, give each player three coin tokens. These will be used later in the game to buy resources from other players. After this is done, the first round can begin. Take the first deck and split it evenly amongst all the players. Before we take a look at the cards, let's first take a look at the Wonder Board. For this example, we'll go with the Lighthouse of Alexandria. At the bottom of the Wonder Board, you'll find Build Stages, which give you rewards once you finish them. And if you flip the board over, you'll find a Nighttime Mode, which is a little harder but gives you different rewards. If you look in the top left corner of your Wonder Board, you'll find a resource that your Wonder provides for you automatically. For each wonder, it can be a different resource. Like for the Temple of Zeus, it's bricks, and for the Hanging Gardens, it's lumber. Players use these resources to build things. For instance, this wonder stage takes two stone, and once you build it, you have gained three victory points. For the next stage, you use two iron, and that unlocks the ability to gain one of these resources for another project. For the third wonder stage, you will need papyrus and silk, and that will net you seven points at the end of the game. All right, so that's the wonder board wrapped up. Let's talk about cards. And now, this pile of cards in your hand can look rather daunting, but it's actually very simple. You just have to pay attention to the colors, more or less. Let's take a look. Now, the first cards that you'll probably run across are brown cards, and brown cards give you resources. This one gives you iron. You will use these resources when you're building on your wonder or laying down certain other cards that require a resource to build. Some brown cards give you the option between one resource and another. Like this one, this one gives you iron or bricks, but keep in mind that it also costs one coin to build. There are other cards that give you resources and these are the gray cards. And the gray cards just give you resources that are a little more rare. This gray card is giving me Papyrus, which is a good thing to have in the later game. Next up, we're going to be talking about the yellow cards, and the yellow cards usually focus on trading, especially when it comes to buying resources from your neighbors. In this card, it tells us that it will only cost us one coin to buy a wood, stone, iron, or brick from the player to our right. The blue cards are extremely simple in comparison. Their only purpose is to give you victory points at the end of the game. Now notice that this one costs stone to build. This is the reason that you want to lay down resource cards as soon as possible. Now for some of these cards, you might be noticing some symbols up in this corner, and those are important, but we'll be getting to those soon. Next up are the red cards, and the red cards are the military aspect of your kingdom, and they usually cost something to build, but what you're really looking for is how many symbols are at the top. This is worth one military power, and it costs one brick to build. How does military power work in this game? We'll talk about it later. Next up, there are green cards, and green cards represent the technology of your kingdom. At the top of these cards, you will notice that they have a symbol. In this one, it's a cog, whereas this one, has a clay tablet. These symbols do nothing by themselves, but at the end of the game, they really add up when it comes to points. Green cards typically cost a rarer resource, 
but they also have these other symbols up in the corner, which again, we'll talk about later. So back to the game. We're looking at our hand and we wanna know what we wanna build. Right now I'm thinking resources might be the most important thing, so we'll choose this one. We place the card that we've chosen on the table and once everybody is ready, we all flip over our cards at the same time, in essence, building them. Since our building required a coin, we pay that to the bank and then we place it right about here so we can keep track of what we have. After this is all done, we take the rest of the cards in our hands and pass it in the direction of the arrow at the bottom of the card. So in this instance, we pass the deck to our left and gain one from our right. All right, so let's see what this hand has in it. We'll take a look and uh, let's say for sake of argument that we want to build this military structure, the stockade. Now the stockade requires lumber to build which is a resource that we do not have in our kingdom. Now our neighbor does, he has two stone and one lumber. So it looks like we're gonna have to do some trading. So when we come to the part where we flip over our card, we say, all right, I'm buying lumber from this player and we give him two coins. Now the Pharaoh doesn't want to flip over a card. He wants to work on his wonder. He's got the lumber. And so when it comes to the point where everyone else flips over the cards, he takes his card and slides it under the first step of his wonder. Play continues like this until all the players are left with just one card in their hand. They take this last card and place it in the discard pile. Then it's time to resolve the military aspect of the game. A player's military strength is counted by how many symbols on the red cards they have. You then compare your military strength with your direct neighbors. In this case, Alexandria has no military, so automatically we know that they are going to lose both battles, which in turn earns them two negative points. Now us as the player, we have invested into two military points, so we actually beat the Great Pyramids of Giza as well. So seeing as we won versus Giza and Alexandria, we end up with two victory points. Now Giza, they didn't win over us, but they did win over Alexandria, so they gain a victory point as well, which cancels out the loss token that we gave them. Once the military outcomes have been calculated, it's time for the second round. We take the second deck and deal it out much in the same way as the first deck. Gameplay pretty much runs the same way, except for the fact that we pass the deck in the opposite direction, as the arrow at the bottom of the card indicates. One thing I should have mentioned earlier is if you're running low on funds and you can't really build anything, one thing that you can do is discard a card instead of flipping it over. When you take this course of action, instead of building a building, you are given three coins from the bank. Another thing that's important to know is you can buy resources from your opponents as long as they come from the brown cards, the wonder board, or a gray card. If there's a resource that you want from your opponent's yellow cards, you cannot buy those. Another thing to watch out for is you are not allowed to build two cards that are exactly the same. In this case, there are two presses. The player cannot build a second press. Now, earlier we were talking about these symbols in the upper right corner of some cards. These are super powerful symbols because on some cards, they are actually requirements, but what happens is if you have a card that has that symbol in the upper right, then you can build the card that has it as a requirement for free. You don't have to have the other resources. In this instance, the library requires a book and the scriptorium has a book. So I can build that library without looking at any of the other resources. And these symbols can bridge over to other colors as well. I have a target on this workshop and this archery range has a target as a requirement, so I can build this archery range for free. Like I said, super powerful, and you wanna keep your eye open. Now, earlier I was talking about the military phase and how when you win against an opponent, you get one victory point when you beat them. Now, that is true when you're playing with the first deck, but when you play with the second deck, when you win, you actually get three victory points per military conquest. And just to make it more interesting, when you finish playing with the third deck, that score is boosted up again to five. So winning in the later game is more important than winning in the early game. 
Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys, there are a lot of symbols on the wonder boards and on the purple cards that you might not understand. And though I could explain each and every one, the game seems to know that this is gonna be an issue. And so they've included this big brochure kind of thing that has all the explanations on it. So you don't really need me to explain it all. What I will explain before finishing up this video is how to count up your victory points at the end. When you finish the game, take out the score sheet. At the top, you have a little space there for your initials, and then you're gonna work your way down your column, scoring the separate sections. Now, the first section is gonna be all of the points that you made by building on your wonders. On this wonder board, we only scored three because we didn't build the last section. So we fill in three. Now for the second section, what we do is we count up all of our coins. For every group of three, we score one point. So we have one, two, and then we have some bigger coins. Uh, that would be three and four. So four points were scored. The next section on the list is the military victories and defeats. And because this player never lost a battle, they have 18 points and they don't lose any. So we'll write down 18. Next up are the blue cards, and these are extremely straightforward. You just add up all of the victory points and you write them down. This player only bought the Senate, so they get six points. In a similar vein, the yellow cards, if they give you any victory points, you just write them down. This player doesn't get any, so we got a big fat zero. Now the next section is the green cards, and these are kind of complicated. What you want to do is you want to get matches, but you also want to get one of each as well. For every set that has all three symbols, you get seven points. And for every set of matches, well, it really depends on how many matches you have. And you'll just have to look at the chart here. The last section for scoring is the purple card section. And these cards tend to give you victory points in all sorts of different ways. For instance, these three give me one point for every red card that my neighbors have, one point for every yellow card my neighbors have, and two points for every gray card my neighbors have. In the end, I get a cool 13. After all of this is calculated, you add all of these up and come up with your final score. And of course, the person with the highest score wins. And that's how you play Seven Wonders. It's a pretty cool game, I enjoy it a lot, and I hope you do too. And until next time, this is Hogwash, over and out. I'll catch you later.